forward, and we are hearing heroin mentioned constantly. Um, it is something that is showing up on their radar, and a lot of parents are surprised when they find out that either their child is doing it, their child's peers are, or it's at their child's school. And unfortunately, your average teen user is from a middle class home. A lot of parents hear heroin mentioned and they picture some bad neighborhood, a dark alley, you know, whatever they picture a junkie to be shooting up somewhere, you know, in a, in a dark alley. A lot of times that's not necessarily the case. And is that because it starts off first with the prescription pills? There's a number of reasons why that is the major one. The overprescribing of pain medication in this country has led to that. It is not an exaggeration to use the term epidemic when it comes to prescription drug abuse in this country. And kids get started down that path through legitimate prescriptions, you know, whether they have a sports injury or whatever, or they find out that they can get high from these pills and they're stealing it from the medicine cabinet from a parent or a grandparent. And these are legitimate medicines that have a purpose, they have a reason, but parents are failing to lock them up. They're keeping them in the medicine cabinet and kids are able to find them and get a hold of them easily. When the prescription runs out or when a kid can't afford to pay a dealer anymore, 80 to $100 for an Oxycontin tablet, they turn to heroin because it's cheaper, it's actually more readily available, and it's more powerful, it's even stronger. So you think um, a lot of parents would be surprised by the, or how many kids have tried heroin or as much as it's, it's I guess, sold in schools? They're shocked to find out. Um, actually, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has said that since 2002, first time use between 12 and 17 year olds has risen 80%. And we speak on this in pretty much any school you can imagine. And it's amazing. I will still have parents come up afterwards sometimes and do the, you know, for lack of a better term, not my kid thing where they're like, I knew, you know, I know heroin's a problem, but I know it's not happening here. And it's very eye-opening for them to find out it, it is happening in their child's school. There's some very affluent schools, school districts, and neighborhoods where this is a major problem. Any that you'd want to say? <laughs> I'd prefer not to, to name any by name, but again, affluent, upscale, and then the majority of users are from middle class homes. Your average kid in your average neighborhood. How can parents know? I mean, are there some warning signs? Change in behaviors, drop in grades. Um, when it comes to opiates, often the, the pupils are the size of pinpoints, they're tiny. Um, sluggishness, sleepiness, um, and then looking for paraphernalia. And a lot of times when parents think of heroin, they immediately think of IV use, which is, you know, is the case much of the time, but a lot of kids are not using it uh, in, you know, as an IV drug. They're either snorting it or most frequently we're seeing them smoke it. And parents need to look for l little square pieces of aluminum foil with burn marks and black streaks on them because black tar heroin is the one that's readily available right now that's so cheap and so easy to get. And so parents not only need to look for uh, physical symptoms, but they need to look for paraphernalia and concealment devices as well.